Alright. You got some pretty gnarly branches on it. I need my big saw. Um, let's talk about chainsaws. I love chainsaws, big cranky chainsaws. Um I could move that branch out of the way, but I prefer to run it over. Um as long as I don't scratch the paint on my prestigious vehicle. Uh poor some propellant. Um I love the look of a hardwood. Oh, I just love that. It's the Shire guys, it's the Shire. Road isn't too bad, a little bit of a rut there. Uh, I guess from the plow guy. His truck, well, his truck's a dually gay, so it uh, kind of leaves big ruts. So, but the roads not too bad. But I'll be fixing this up when my client gets back. So, yeah. So chainsaws. Let's talk chainsaws. So you guys saw my little video on Mini Beast yesterday. Hope you enjoyed it. I did get the trigger back put on. Uh, where I'm at so far. Okay. A lot of people don't understand why sometimes why I do things a certain way and not in other ways, but like there's always a method to my madness. Everything I do, as crazy and as and bizarre as it seems sometimes, is actually quite calculated. Doesn't mean it's a good calculation, but it is calculated. And for me, like how I spend my money is very kind of like how a squirrel puts nuts away for the winter. You know what I mean? Because I always go by my average season, right? And uh, hopefully I'll be getting a whole bunch of metal in here. Oh, that car, it's a Mercedes. I looked at it uh, last time I was there. Those little kitty cats. But, uh, yeah, she has a bunch of metal in there I gotta get. Very, very nice little old lady there. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm at... I've got June, uh, May and June's expenses covered. I have to come up with insurance for the car, the plate, the renewal of my license. Uh, possibly, I might park the truck just so I don't have to pay the plate on the truck because that's about 400 and some odd bucks. And the insurance and the plate on my dad's truck. Uh, somebody asked me, no, um, my dad does, he never borrows the truck car without asking. Uh, he, I don't think he'd, I don't think he'd ever borrow this car. <laughs> I, it's not that I wouldn't let him. Uh, obviously, I'd let him if he needed it. But uh, it's just kind of like a, yeah, I don't want to be seen in that piece of shit kind of thing. <laughs> kind of, I mean, if you see his nice new F-150, well, it's not brand new, but newer. Uh, yeah, I can understand. But um, plus he has the truck as the backup, right? The, the little uh, Mazda as the backup, right? But I'm like, uh, I told my dad, I said, I'll, I'll you know, renew the, because I need a truck once in a while. Uh, like today, I'm going to try to do a scrap metal run just to make a little bit of money today. I mean, this I'll be getting paid for, but not for a couple of months, about a month or so before I get paid here. Um, and that's one of the things with me is I don't get paid daily all the time. Sometimes, it, uh, some clients I get paid every two months, uh, that kind of stuff. So I, you could, you could see all that, like, okay, yeah, you get a big wad of cash. You can't just run out and spend it right away. You have to hang on to it, right? So I'm two months still ahead on my um, my living expenses. My goal is to be a minimum of six months ahead of all my living expenses. Very hard to do. It takes years to get that far ahead. It's just when you take an unexpected hit on something, uh, what ends up happening is, is it dampens that blow so you're not just struggle, 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 struggle. Uh, because for me, most of the winter, like this winter was bizarre because I made like a thousand bucks in January, which never happens. Uh, usually I make like at the best two, three hundred dollars, right? And then in, in February I made about another uh, six hundred, which covered, you know, basically my basic expenses. And then in May or eight, uh, March I made about eight, nine hundred, and I'm already up to about six something now. Well, maybe uh, once I get paid for the two little jobs I did, uh, I'm probably at eight hundred bucks already. But I might not get paid for those till next month. So I'm right now I'm already 620 bucks ahead for the month. Not ahead, but like me. So that would at least cover next month's basic expenses. The problem is, is there's still gas. There's still, you know, I've got some gas money ahead here already. Because I take $20 per day that I work, 
I take $20 right away and I throw it in for gas money. So I always have, I'm never looking for gas money. But first in the year, it's hard to do that to get ahead, right? Because you gotta get so many things ahead. Uh, my credit card so far out of the $200 minimum that I, I'm gonna put on the card, I'm up to 260. So by the end of the month, I might be at uh, 300, $400. Right, so there, there's not too bad. But I don't want to go much more than that because, uh, so I got this little, like I'll make money off this little job tomorrow, uh, digging out some garden uh, soil. And get some new garden soil in there. So I got a big job there. Hopefully it'll be like, you know, as the money comes in uh, week after week, if I can make five, 600 bucks a week, I would be very, very happy with that. And within about three weeks from now, if I make that much, April's kind of hit and miss, but if I make that much, uh, within three weeks, I'm going to be starting to get ahead enough that I can really start to say, okay, yes, I'll go get the big chainsaw. And then maybe, uh, you know, with that chainsaw, I might get a chainsaw job. Even once a month, like one big chainsaw job a month could pay a month's rent. You know, like a tree like that, that could, depending on where it is, could be between three and $8,000. You know, and I might spend maybe 500 bucks of gas and whatever to do it, right? So there's a big profit margin there. But you'd say, well, why would you charge so much? Because the pro guys are going to uh, charge you $25,000. <laughs> you know what I mean? So for my area, most of my chainsaw jobs are going to be probably 35 to 60 bucks an hour, depending on what they are, right? If I'm climbing anything, it's going to be 100 bucks an hour. But I don't have all the rigging to climb yet. I do have a lanyard, but I want to get a newer one because I don't know how old that one is. It's never been stressed, but you know, is what it is, right? Uh, you gotta up upgrade your equipment. I definitely want chainsaw chaps. Uh, if I can get them this month, next month, whatever. Get another little saw, another two little saws. Get the big saw. I'd be happy if I can get those three, uh, or at least two saws. One little tiny one, the 162. And then the saw I got picked out for my uh, kind of uh, big boy saw slash medium saw, right? And um, is it going to be the 500i? I don't know. We'll see. Is it going to be the 462? I don't know. We'll see. Is it going to be the uh, Megalobarclodon, the 661? At some point, yes. I will need a Megalobarclodon. The 881, uh, there's nothing in my area that's uh, going to require the 881. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, if 92 cc's can't get the job done, I'm not taking the job, you know what I mean? Um, but I don't want to saw that big all the time. Uh, will it be tree Kong? I don't know. Maybe it will. I, I have no idea, but I really don't want a used saw because... Like, the thing with tree Kong was... He had problems when I... Uh, that was the, uh, the 272, the Husky 272 uh, cc saw. And that's fine for knocking down a big tree, doing up the butt ends, but man, I wouldn't want to, I've worked with the, the 372, which is even lighter than the 272, same saw, just one generation newer, uh, the 372, and now it's the 572. Uh, to work with a 72cc saw all day on stuff that's like no bigger than the steering wheel, like why? <laughs> you know, like stuff from the steering wheel size and smaller, like 72ccs, even if that was an elm, you, you, 70, it's, it's so overkill. It's just, it's reliable when you're knocking down the tree. You know what I mean? Like, you know overkill's okay when you're knocking down the tree. But if you're doing stuff that's like 10 inches round, the last thing you want is a 72cc chainsaw to knock down trees that are only 10 inches round. It's actually, the saw's too cumbersome at that point. Um, you guys, like, I'm going to try to get some more footage. I have to be careful how I film. Like, uh, I don't normally film at clients' places and stuff like that. But uh, if I can film some of the tree job that I'm going to do Monday, you're going to laugh at the size of trees I knocked down with Mini Beast, that little 31cc saw. It, it, it'll make you a believer. You, you'll be like, yeah, but you're going to burn your saw out doing that. No, I won't. Because I know how to do it. You know, I don't, I never force my saws. You know what I mean? If you gotta wait for them a little bit, you wait. You know what I mean? You're cutting down trees, you're not racing cars. You know what I mean? And the thing about that is the money I'm gonna be making off, like, well, Mini Beast has already paid for itself uh, once or once and a half already this year. I've used it three times. You know, like, 
what a great investment. A $200 saw that has made me thousands of dollars within like a season and, and you know, one season and now starting a second season. Great return on investment. The 162, I just want it because it's brand new and it's even smaller with the 12 inch bar. Great for when 